hi guys it's coming up to valentine's day and if you're like me you might be thinking about ways in which you can make this day special for you and your spouse now i have a few simple ways in which we could create this wonderful setting without breaking the budget it can be easy and quick and also create a great ambience hi guys welcome back to kitchen colony and thank you for joining me this week first i'd like to thank my subscribers for old and new and also those who are watching for coming back faithfully each week well guys if you have not yet subscribed please remember to and if you like what you see remember to give a thumbs up and also share my videos now today i'll be sharing with you two meat dishes the first one will be brown butter lemon salmon and the other one would be honey almond chicken now this can be eaten with anything and also i'll be making a cheesecake now here's a quick and easy um meal now we are going to do brown butter lemon salmon no you don't have to use um, salmon you can use any other fish fillet so to do, do this you choose any seasoning you want i have some seasoning here to season my fish nicely then we're going to use some butter over here we have something similar to lemon pepper which gives a tangy taste we have garlic and herb salt some lemon zest and half of a lemon now we're going to season our fish back and front on both sides actually Cut it in and then turn over. Make sure it's on the fish. Then turn over and you're gonna go the skin side. Well I have the skin on, but you don't have to keep it on. But because this fish is very thin, I left the skin on. And we're gonna season. Now we're going to allow this to marinate while I get on to the stove and put the butter on. Now in our pan we're going to put some butter and we're going to allow it to melt and burn until it starts becoming brown. Butter is browning, let us finish seasoning our fish. So to this I'm going to add a little of this because this gives the tiny flavor that I want in the salmon. And then we're going to add some garlic herb and salt. Now well, that's it. Now we're packing the seasoning in. Alright. And just leave this for a few minutes until the oil and the butter is melted. Now this is what you want, the milk solids become brown. Now you're going to place your fish skin side down. And because it's so thin, it's going to take about a minute and a half to cook on each side. Now it's time to turn your salmon to the opposite side and give it another minute and a half. Remember this is thin, if the salmon is thick, you have to give it up to two, two to three minutes. Half it up, so we'll turn it back over because we don't want it to dry out. And then we finish it. Now to this, we're gonna add our lemon zest. We add our lemon zest. And this is going to be such a tiny bit of flavor. And then we add our half of a lemon. We don't want any season it, so we're squeezing out the palm of our hand. This is what we want. Guys, the smell is wonderful. You smell the, um, the lemon is coming through and along with the other seasonings that I've used. Now it's time to turn it off 
and the fish is done. Now the fish took about six minutes to cook and now it's time to get on to our honey, almond chicken. Now in my bowl I have um, chicken breast and I'm going to create today honey, almond chicken breast and I'm going to show you how simple and easy it is. Now we're going to take our um, breast piece and um, we're going to beat it because we want to flatten it for a little while so that it cooks quick. Not too much because you still want to be able to lift it out of the, the, the bag. Next one, just let me for a little bit, especially those high parts. Now we have beaten our chicken breasts, they're almost the same size in, in height. You know, that's what we wanted. And now to season this, we're going to use some steak seasoning, some garlic and herb and salt, sorry, a little honey some olive oil and some flaked almond, toasted flaked almond. Now if you are, if you are allergic to nuts, you can use mushroom or you can use carrot, use whatever you want. We sprinkle a generous amount on each side. On both sides. Now the meals are not supposed to take long, they are supposed to be quick and easy because it's a dinner. And you want you don't want a lot of meat because of the amount of food you're going to consume. A little salt. If you need more, you can add it later. And we are going to allow this to marinate for six, um, 15 minutes. Now it's time to make our sauce. I'm going to add a little onion, about a tablespoon, and then to this, it's optional, but I want a little onion, um, ketchup in mine. You don't have to. You just add water and that will be okay. So I'm going to add a little ketchup. Add a little water, about two tablespoons, because that's all we need. And we dissolve the honey. Now to our hot pan, we're going to add about four, three tablespoons of oil. I'm going to allow it to get hot so that we have a sizzle when we fry. Our oil is hot, so we're going to place our chicken in. We're going to allow it to cook 3 minutes on each side. Now 3 minutes up, so we're going to turn to the opposite side. The other side, sorry. And then we just leave it for 3 minutes on medium heat. Remember, medium heat, not too high. You don't want to burn it. Because the seasoning is on it and you don't want to burn it. 3 more minutes. Now it's time to remove our meat. It's now cooked. We're going to remove it from the pan. Just looking. Now to our pan, we're going to add our um, um, almond flakes. Sorry. We're going to add it. And we're going to toast it for a while. Moving it around in the saucepan. We're going to now add our sauce. We're going to turn up our stove. Our sauce. And now I'm adding my chicken breast again and allowing it to finish steaming because you don't want to overcook chicken breast for another two minutes. I'm going to cover for and allow it to steam for about two to three minutes and then your meal is done. Now well, this is two minutes after. Very nice. It's done. So I'm going to turn it off because we don't want to overcook the breast it will come chewy so we're going to turn the stove off and your chicken is done for a valentine dessert we're going to have chocolate cheesecake with mango topping and some strawberry um, topping also now, now our cheesecake we have to do it in three different batches so the first part is the base which would be biscuit and some melted butter so this is the first part we're going to do. Now for the second part, we're going to do, um, we were, we're going to need some double cream, icing sugar, soft cheese, chocolate, dark chocolate, and some gelatin. 
Now for the third and final part, we're going to use some mango puree along with some cherry topping. Now I thought I'd use strawberry, but I decided to use cherry at the last minute. My previous um, mixture was too light and I wanted a darker chocolate looking color. So I chose to use some Oreos instead. this color but I chose to go with the darker one which was made from Oreo cookies. Now it's time to add our melted butter 30 grams and we mix we mix our crumb in. As I said before we are doing individual cheesecake and I'll be starting my base with the crumb that I've just made. Now you determine all how you want it. Remember it's three layers so you need to leave enough space for the other two layers. Now this is what you want. We leave enough space for the other two layers. Now we're going to put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes. So allow it to set. Now guys if you're going to make cheesecake for Valentine's make sure you do it a day prior. Because it takes a little while. And you need time to set them. Now in my bowl I have 380 grams of softened cheese and you have to have it at room temperature so that it's easy to beat. So I'm going to beat mine right now to soften it further. You may use granulated sugar, honey or whatever you want but I'm using icing sugar because it dissolves or it melts quickly and I'm using a third of a cup. aside so we can get ready to do the other part. Now we need to dissolve some gelatin and I, right here I have a tablespoon of gelatin and I'm going to get it um, dissolve it and put it aside so that I can finish the second part. This is a tablespoon. Now we're going to put a little bit of water to mix out the gelatin and then we're going to add a quarter cup of boiling water to it. Then we set it aside so that it can get cool. Now we're using 400 milliliters of cream. Now we're going to whisk our um, milk until it's very thick. We don't want a thick heat. We want a soft heat. We want it to be very soft or thick like ice cream. Now this is what we want. Now we're going to um, put in our cream cheese. Now we're going to fold this, this in. In my bowl I have um, 200 grams of dark chocolate melted and I'm just going to pour it in to my mixture and fold it in. Now to melt your chocolate you can use the microwave and you put it in and every 30 seconds you stop you, you mix the chocolate until it's all melted. I've used chocolate bar. Each time I keep mixing until it's melted. Now at this point I'm going to put three spoons of gelatin. It's cool enough so one, two, three and I'm leaving the rest. Let's put four. I'm leaving the rest for the next Sec, um, section. Now, this what I'm making is for about 12 different and um, 12 um, cheesecake. But you know, I'm showing you only two. That's the reason for this amount. Now, I've just taken this from the refrigerator and it's very cold, so I'm going to put in the first layer. Just add a little bit more because remember, we have another layer to put on. 
I'm smoothing it off and then I'm going to put another layer but we have to put this back in the refrigerator to set. Now in this bowl we have the mango puree so we're going to use some here, add some gelatin and then put the second layer on the cheesecake. So I'm going to remove some from here and I think I want half of a ladle on each. So I'm taking out enough for four and I'll show you what I'm going to do about this. Now I'm going to add about three tablespoons of gelatin and we're going to mix it in. We don't want it to be too tight, we want it to be pliable, you know, we don't want it to be too tough. So we're not putting too much gelatin in it. Now we're going to spoon the second layer. We don't want too much, but we want it to be shown. This is about it. Because remember, we're leaving enough space for the topping. Now I'm going to wrap with some cling film and put it away to set. Now I'm not going to put the topping on until I'm up when I'm going to serve them. And I'll show you that later. Our Valentine table is set. Now dinner is served. Mmm, this was finger licking. Guys, look at it. Look at it. You can tell that it was done in our kitchen. You would believe that it was done at a high-end restaurant. But guys, this is what you can create if you just take the time. And both meal, both meat kind took under 10 minutes. Guys, this was worth it. The chicken was also served with steamed vegetables, a vegetable salad, and cheesy mashed potato. The salmon was served with steamed vegetables along with a fresh vegetable salad and also a spicy vegetable couscous. If you don't want to cook, then you could create a dessert area where you have the melted chocolate, fruit, your wine and your cheesecake and that would be great also. But you can have it also with your meal. If you don't have a chocolate fountain, then let me show you a room which you can keep your chocolate melting and warm. If you've enjoyed this week's video then don't forget to give me a thumbs up share and also if you have not yet subscribed please remember to subscribe guys it was nice doing this for you and i hope you did enjoy thank you for watching again bye bye